The coronavirus pandemic is dramatically changing our everyday lives. Throughout the week, we're examining what this new normal looks like, including how we work, socialize, and get life-saving information. Already, a majority of people are staying inside their homes. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, is one of them. He reached out to people across the country to see what their new normal is at home. David, good morning. Hey, Anthony, good morning. I am at home under self-quarantine because I had a brief contact with a colleague who tested positive for the virus. I have no symptoms. I have not been tested. But the company asked me to stay home as a precaution, and I was more than happy to honor that. So we wanted to talk to people who are at home on what is a beautiful morning here in New York City and around the country, either because they are self-quarantined like me or because they're answering the call of their country to stay home. My name is Jamichael Vicepo Ocasio. And I'm Kimberly McCullough. This couple from Nashville, Tennessee, says they've been tracking COVID-19 since January. And that is why they are now self-quarantined in their apartment. This is our decontamination station in process. And step for social distancing when entering the house. The Gonzalez family home in the Bronx of New York City is now a classroom for four-year-old Ramses and his 13-year-old sister, Haley. She's been using Google Classroom to interact with her teachers and peers. And I was able to like focus way better on online than actually in, per in person. 17 year old high school senior Meg Boone sent us this video from her home in McKinney, Texas, which is right outside Dallas. It's just been um, kind of hard as just like a normal teenage kid um, to think, well, what's going to happen next? What about college? What about my diploma? What about finishing high school? What's next? My greatest fear is bringing something home to them. Mona Mualam is working so from home in New York know, City. Kind of she cares for her 90-year-old father and 78-year-old mother. I go to grocery stores um, late at night at, after midnight to make sure I'm minimizing exposure. Um, same thing with pharmacies. Um, you know, I don't take cabs anywhere. I won't order Ubers. I stay six feet away from my parents at all times. And it's hard. In the house. In the house. In the house. And, and that's been tough, David. You know, like, they're anxious. They're terrified, and I can't hug them. I can't give them, like, hold their hand, you know? And again, I recognize that maybe some of the things I'm doing, you know, maybe they're a little bit extreme, but I cannot carry that kind of guilt should something happen to them. And then there's the story of our CBS News Radio colleague, Bill Rakoff. Bill and his family were not able to be by his mother's side when she died this past weekend from natural causes. They couldn't be there because of new guidance that prevents nursing home visits unless the person is dying. But Bill and his family didn't know how imminent his mother Laura Lee's death was. Bill reflected on his dad's devotion to his mom. He had been her staunchest advocate uh, and caretaker, always taking her to the doctor, always advocating, always stepping in when a hospitalist or a doctor didn't get it. Uh, and making sure that they got it. Um, and ironically, on her last day of life, he couldn't be there. Our sincerest condolences to our colleague Bill and to the entire Rakoff family. Uh, two other reflections from my conversations with Americans over the last couple of days. There are so many people who work freelance and are wondering when that next paycheck is going to come and literally are living paycheck to paycheck. And also, I don't know, but the world seems a bit nicer. Even here in New York City, with all the hustle and bustle and meanness that can be, uh, it seems a bit kinder. So I will be home through Sunday on self-quarantine, but don't feel bad for me. Paddington is <laughs> oh. good company. Oh. Wow, he's we're getting all, big. We're yeah. all good. He's getting so big and he's so cute. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. And David's right, kindness always works. Yes. That's the thing I worry about. Like you said yesterday, Tony, we may be socially distant, but we have to not be emotionally distant. Because human touch is so important. And many of us and can't do that now. Especially now when you can't touch. Many yeah. of us can't do that. Yeah. Well, we want to know what your new normal looks like as the coronavirus changes the way we work, the way we parent our children, and the way we connect with other people. Please share your story on Twitter by using the hashtag MyNewNormal or by emailing us at coronavirus at cbsnews.com. Who knows, maybe we'll be able to share your story with our viewers.